Oh, I'll build this car for three grand. It's just like, you're an idiot. Doesn't want to work, does it? So we've had a bit of a car shuffle. Um, drift van's now out of the area with the hoist, uh, back over this part of the workshop. Um, a lot of fabrication to get stuck into now, so it's easy to do it over here. Um, doesn't necessarily have to be lifted. So I've acquired a few extra bits and pieces. The nephews have been busy, so I'll let you know where we're up to. The boys have uh, started learning the joys of removing sound deadening. So uh, we're not being fancy with it, just the old chisel and hammer method. They've been getting stuck into that and doing pretty well, really, for 12 year olds. These have just been tacked into place. We've made the main hoop. So the boys did a good job. We, we went out and measured it all up, drew it on the floor, and then bent it on the mandrel bender. So that was a good little lesson for them. We got that sorted, so that's gonna be my job to get that in today. We've got an R31 diff. And, uh, Brody's given me his old S13 rear coilovers. So this back end's gonna be relatively, um, a, a reasonable amount of work. Um, equal length, four link rear end, five link if you wanna get testicle about it. Uh, with the panard rod, so yeah. Um, coilovers acquired, diff acquired, uh, main hoops been made. Um, We've got a few other bits and pieces. Steering column, front grille, couple lights, and the steering rack itself. So that's a, a little trap um, that you gotta watch when you're building these things. Um, I bought the shell for $150, and it's like, oh, what a bargain. But really, you gotta buy every, well not necessarily buy, but you gotta acquire every last little tiny bit because there's literally nothing on this car. So I had to get doors. Um, I did get front panels, I'll show you. Um, every nut, every bowl, everything you need, you need to get it. Um, whether you pay for it or acquire it from friends or wreckers or whatever. Um, so those all sort of add up. Now, <laughs> I was under the delusion that I was going to get away with this car for three grand on track. Um, put together a, a bit of an estimate. Um, that I thought was fairly reasonable on the old Excel spreadsheet. And yeah, it blew out to six and a half straight away um, for what I thought was a reasonable price for all the things that I'd need. So yeah, I don't think it's gonna be happening for the three. I've been keeping a really close tab on my prices. Um, I've got an Excel sheet that I do with the lads. Um, and as we buy things, we say the date that we bought them, what we estimated they were gonna be, and then what we actually paid for them. So for them, it's a good idea understanding how much money is actually involved in building a project like this so oh, i'll build this car for three grand it's just like you're an idiot um yeah estimation of threes realistically six and a half and even still then so I, I mean i haven't been paying a lot for what we've got um all the things i have been getting are what i consider the right price um but it all still adds up every dollar's Every dollar adds up, yeah. So, got front panels. <laughs> they are ordinary. Apparently the car lived by the ocean. Same thing, the bonnet's horrible. Um, but it is, so this is an A71. They've normally got the shovel front on them. Um, I've gone back to the flat front because I've been told that um, cool kids run flat front on KEs. So first K70, all right? It's an A71, but they're all the same. It's a K70. Um, so I'm trying to be cool. Uh, it's, it's a real struggle for me. Is We do have a cross member, so that's gonna put us well and truly on the uh, track to getting the car um, to that rolling state that we're sort of aiming for at the moment. So one of the boys gave me a hand and we cut the, um, so it's a K70 cross member, not an A71. So I cut off the, the 4K or 3K or whatever motor they have in them, cut those mounts off. Project's coming along. Um, the main focus now is gonna be putting that hoop in. So we'll get started on that today. Um, 
And then once the hoop's in, I can start to look at how I'm going to build that four link rear off the uh, cage itself. So that's where we're up to with the project. Um, it's ticking along. The boys rock up every Wednesday. So three of them are my nephews and we've also got one of their good mates. He comes in, so I've got four young lads and they're really enjoying it and uh, having a good time and learning lots and uh, just you know, learning what it's all about to work on cars and build stuff and, and have a vision and, and work, work towards that. So I like having them here. Uh, we have a good time, we have a good laugh, they get to learn something. Um, and by the time it all wraps up, we should have a pretty cool little track car that we can uh, all enjoy together and, and go out and blast some tyres and uh, just have a good time. So let's get stuck into it, eh? So because I'm going to be building my rear four link off of the cage, I need to get my hoop 100% uh, millimetre perfect um, square to the rest of the car. Um, the four links themselves are going to be equal lengths. So if I'm 10 mil off on where my hoop's sitting, um, then the car's going to crab down the track. So we need to get that absolutely bang on. Um, so I've decided to use um, this channel through the center of the car here as my datum. Now, I'd like to think that that's pretty square and Toyota did a pretty good job that the car's not built like this. Um, from what I can tell, this car's never been in a prang. Um, all the front rails look pretty good. Uh, nothing looks like it's been pulled or straightened. So um, I'm going to go off this. So what I've done, I had my big square, and we set off the straight edge there, giving myself two datum marks there. So one there, one on the other side. So we're going to come from there all the way back to where my cage um, it's going to be just tacked in place for today um, and we need to get that absolutely bang on mate so that puts my my hoop here that gets me square to the car and then uh, we'll chuck I've got this seal here set up level um, with it when I made the um, the frame that it sits on so this sits nice and level uh, so we'll run a spirit level um, up and down here and get it nice and straight and I might even just put a bit of a tack up the top. And then uh, that gives us a datum to then work from. So from there, we start to look at uh, diff locations and uh, bits and pieces. But yeah, let's get the, uh, the hoop tacked in so that we can start to build from it. Right, so we've got our main hoop tacked in. Um, as you can see, it wasn't a straightforward process. That's due to me not being 100% on getting my bends perfect. Um, so little things like that will catch up to you later on. Um, was it a dire situation? No, we made it work. Uh, do I need to get good? Yeah, so it's just, you know, 
little angle there, little angle there, it all sort of adds up in the end, but at, you know, it wasn't completely off, just a little bit of imagination and a bit of a stretch at the bottom, and I've got it exactly where I want. So I've done my double measurement, I'm bang on 715 mil off those datum points that I marked off this straight edge here are also nice and square up and down. So that gives us a, a spine, if you will, to now build the rest of the cage. So from here, um, we'll obviously build back to, uh, we're gonna have to make strut towers for the S13 coilovers. So they'll get made, we'll put our front arms in and start to look at um, side intrusion bars and, and whatnot. Um, so it's only tapped for now. When building cages, you don't weld them at the moment. Uh, you build everything, you have it 100% built and then what actually happens is um, you break these tacks and you, you take these platforms out and you drop it down. So uh, we're not fully welding today. Uh, I did put some pretty healthy tacks on it though because um, I can't have this moved. This is where uh, where it's got to go. So, but uh, there we go, made hoping. Our roll cage is well and truly started now. So uh, yeah, happy days. Been messing about for a little while. I've uh, got the diff um, roughed in, it's uh, nowhere near where it actually needs to go, but I'm um, just trying to get an idea of what's involved um, with my four links and where they're going to actually go. <sighs> Loads of different ideas, looking at different solutions, how others have done them, how I'd like to do them. Um, so I think I've come up with a reasonably good idea. So let's have a look. So that's kind of where the diff's going to sit. Like I said, it, it's pretty rough. Um, it's going to be much lower than that, so they've just got to sit a fair bit higher. So it looks like that floor is going to have to come out. Um, and so a few issues that I'm running into is I've got the chassis rail here, which is in a really different spot to an 8.6. 8.6 um, chassis rail um, turns a lot harder, and it's like it's more here because um, they run their, their four links here with the um, 8.6. Um, that's kind of messed me up because I'd like to have the two arms right over the top of each other if I can because from all the photos I've seen and anyone who sort of seems to know what they're doing, that's how they run them. Uh, specifically in the the rally escorts, they're, they're right on top of each other. So um, I contemplated running them in right here, right where the chassis rail is. Contemplated going there, and of course that's smack bang where the um, sway bar mount is on the 31 diff. So I don't really want to start hashing around making different sway bar setups. I would like to just stick with as much factory as possible. So it's looking like I'm going to go on the other side of the chassis rail, which um, I think is going to work. So. The, uh, what I'm thinking is I'm probably going to cut this piece here out and uh, want the top arm will come through here and to my um, main hoop through through that section. So this is the chassis rail here. Um, we'll come on the other side of that through there. I think that's going to work. So um, yeah, I'll give you a look from underneath so you can sort of see what I'm talking about. So that's the factory lower arm. Um, and I'm kind of contemplating, I think I can probably send that through to where the leaf spring used to mount. Um, it kind of lines up. I might need to to do something fancy there. So once I get the uh, rose joints and um, the tubes to run it all, then I can have a closer look. So I may be able to use that mount in some way. And then um, this top one here. That's where the uh, coilovers are going to mount to. Um, off the front of that, I'll uh, make a bracket or drill a hole in the bracket that's there, and we'll run the other uh, top link from there, which is on the other side of this chassis rail. So that's kind of what I'm thinking. Uh, this is the size of wheel that I'd like to, to buy to run in the car. Um, so there's obviously plenty of clearance. Um, so yeah, that's been a whole heap of scratching the head. I'd say pulling out hair, but I don't have any to get to pull out anymore. So yeah, tomorrow um, we'll cut these mounts off. They're 100% not being used. 
Um, I reckon I'm going to have a clearance issue here with this beam, so that's probably going to have to come out because um, the, the diff housing is going to want to sit there. And yeah, we'll poke a hole through the front to run that top um, on the forelimb. So that's kind of the thought process. And then in here will be, uh, this is the top of the S13 coilover. So we have to build a strut tower that sits about there-ish. So I've sort of worked it out, it's roughly 400 mil off the, the floor that's there. And then we just got to get that angle angle right you don't want them straight up and down you want them on a bit of an angle because as the diff as the diff moves it doesn't actually move up and down like that one wheel it will sort of go in a bit of an arc so yeah we'll set that off there and then once that's there uh, the roll cage then gets built to the to this top section here so your arms will go up there so yeah whole lot of messing about um, it's going to be a whole heap of work but I think it will pay off in the end it should hopefully allow the car to, to drive fairly nice so yeah a bit of fun and games again um, it's good to sort of see like having ideas in my head and you know this is something I've wanted to do for quite a while and then to actually be cutting the car up and getting stuck into it and seeing exactly where stuff needs to go and where I can put it and running into issues yeah I'm enjoying it um, so, yeah, I think it'll be a fun little car. I think the rear end's going to really help it just to handle really, really nice. Um, and uh, we're going to rail it. It's going to be pretty low. Um, and so we can have our cake and eat it too because most railed cars handle like garbage because your suspension geometry is completely being compromised. Whereas this, I can set it as low as I want and then build the geometry around that. So, um, yeah, looking forward to that. See how she goes. You can sort of see that top mount there. Is what we need to bring forward. Chassis rail basically finishes at the bottom of this seam here. Oh, no, there's a fair bit more. So about here-ish. So we've got a fair bit to play with. So the more I look at this, the, uh, the better I'm feeling about it. I think the idea is going to work. So uh, you can see the mounts here. This is where the factory bottom one is on the R31 um, Scott, uh, diff. And then uh, we've got the top mounts here for, um, that's where the shock absorber goes. So I was thinking of running the top mount for the top arm, maybe fabricating um, another one to sort of go from about here-ish. Um, and yeah, so that's gonna go forward. Now we're pretty snug to the chassis rail, but uh, good enough there that we should be able to clear it and I reckon it's all going to work out just nicely. So I'm going to start cutting in here and make sort of the opening of how much space it's going to actually need to go through there. <laughs> 